In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this adorable elephant cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional cake decorator just outside of Philly. I've been decorating cake since 2002. And on this channel, I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. So like I said in the beginning, I am making this totally adorable, I wanna to say totes adorbs, <laughs> but it's an adorable elephant cake and it is simple-ish and beginners can get this. Now I start with a fully iced and stacked cake. I didn't put that in this video because I don't want the video to be five hours long because nobody's gonna watch that. <laughs> so I can link below how I bake, fill, ice, and stack cakes, just so you could see that if you're not sure how to do that. And before we get started, I just wanna let you know that I designed my first free guide for you guys. It's a birthday cake design blueprint. It'll help you come up with designs for your birthday cakes, and I will link that in the description below. And I do, like with my email campaign, I do wanna start sending you guys more stuff. I've just been so busy <laughs> that that has kind of uh, fallen to the side, but I will be creating more stuff to email to you um just stay tuned for that so if you signed up for my emails you'll be getting some more soon so let's get into the video all right so again this is the cake that she wants and i want to start rolling out the fondant that i'm going to need so i can start to cut everything else out the elephant is going to be rolled out a little thicker so i can stick skewers in the bottom but then i also need to roll out thinner gray as well for the polka dots so I'd like to look at my picture and see, okay, I need a really thick, a thicker gray, I need a thin gray, and then I need white, light blue, medium blue, uh, all rolled out. So I like to roll out all of my fondant first, so then I can cut the decorations. I printed out the elephant that I'm gonna use, the size that, I'm, that I need it to be. This is gonna go on top of a five inch tier. So I printed it out five inches, but just print out the picture that you want. I will link this picture below so you could find this elephant. So I already have some gray marshmallow fondant here, but I want to add some a little more. So I have my marshmallow fondant. I can link my video for my recipe for this below. And to make the fondant more pliable, you gotta pop it in the microwave because I can't work with it right now. It needs to be a little warm. So I'm also gonna take the gray that I have and pop this in the microwave as well. All right, so what I did, I put this in the microwave on a paper plate that's greased with Crisco so it doesn't stick to it. And I just put it in the microwave for 20 seconds, flipped it over, did it for another 20 seconds. And this fondant doesn't have any Tylos in it, so it, it softened up pretty quick. This fondant already has Tylos powder mixed into it, so it took an another about 15 seconds for it to get really soft. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I work with Tylos powder all the time. I mix a little bit of Tylos powder into my fondant. The Tylos powder is gonna allow the fondant to set really hard, and it's gonna keep its shape. So when this elephant is on top of the cake, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna dry like gum paste. I love this stuff, so I can link this below. So since I only need a little more gray, I'm gonna take the gray that I already have and just add a little more white fondant to it. Knead that together. Take a little Crisco in my hands, put it on the countertop so it doesn't stick to my hands or the counter. All right, since the gray fondant that I just used had Tylos powder mixed in with it, I don't need to add any more Tylos powder to this. I will show you how I add the Tylos when we make the blue. Now from adding the white, it made the gray a little lighter, so I wanna deepen it. I have this Super Black Americolor gel, and you only need a little bit to get a gray color, okay? Depending on how dark you want the gray to be. Now, the black coloring, black food coloring, has a purple tint to it. So if you just use a little bit of black, you'll notice that your gray looks a little purpley. So you have to cancel out the purple on the opposite side of the color wheel of purple is yellow. So I like to take a little bit of this gold. Um, I, I don't think Alan make, makes these anymore, but I can just link gold food coloring. And just a really, really tiny bit. 
you don't need a lot if you use too much then your gray is going to look yellow <laughs> so it's it's really tricky you just need a tiny tiny bit of the color on the opposite side of the color wheel to cancel out the color and i hope this makes sense <laughs> And good, I'll set that aside. And now I want to make the blue. So now, I want to add a little bit of Tylos powder to this fondant because it does not have any in it. This is about a pound of fondant here. Now you can see the fondant, it's, it's not pretty at first <laughs> when you start working with it. I like to add Tylos powder and it helps make the fondant smooth. I have a video on that. I can link that below as well. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of, of Tylos powder on here. So it looks like a lot in my videos, but it's about a half teaspoon per pound of fondant. If you add a lot, it's gonna dry super, super hard and you're really not gonna be able to work with it. And if you do too little, it's not gonna dry hard enough. So you have to find your happy medium I've been working, it with, working with it for so long that I can just eyeball it. But if you want to, you can get a half teaspoon and just sprinkle it on, measure it out. All right, so I wanna take some white and set it aside. And then I wanna make a light blue and a medium blue. All right, so I love this cornflower blue from Wilton, okay? It's like a modern blue with a grayish tint to it. It's not just like, using royal blue and a little bit of royal blue. This just has a better look to it. I don't know. I just like how it looks better than just regular blue. So I'm gonna do a little bit on this one and a little more on this one. So I wanna get a light and a medium color. But I have a light blue, a medium blue, white and gray. These are the colors that I need. And now I, what I wanna do is just roll them out. So I need thick and thin gray fondant. I'll rip a little bit off so I can roll out the thin gray. And I wanna have my picture here for reference and make sure that I roll this out big enough. Now I wanna roll this out about a quarter to a half inch thick. Here's a little trick that I didn't tell you that I usually say in my videos. So if you're kneading fondant, this is gonna go on top of the cake, right? So the front and the back wants to, you want the front and the back to look good. So if you're just kneading fondant and then you just go like this and start to roll it out, look how ugly the back is. So this will be sitting on top of the cake and the back looks so disgusting, right? So what you wanna do is just find a smooth section, right? Knead it out, find a smooth section. This part's smooth, so I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit and then fold it in on each other so now there's a smooth top and a smooth bottom, and now I can roll it out. And then just take my picture here and put it on top and make sure that it covers the whole thing, and it does. And then I'm going to set this aside. And now I'm gonna roll out all of the other colors. Just cutting a piece off here. You can see how thin it is. It's really thin. I'm gonna transfer this over to my table and do that for the other three colors. And then we will continue. So I rolled out the fondant probably about 25 to 30 minutes ago. So once you roll out fondant, you wanna let it um, sit so it can harden and it'll be a lot easier to cut and work with. I have my thick gray fondant here and I'm going to make the elephant. So like always, I have my cutting board. I have a paper towel that I just fold up and then I wet it so I can wipe my X-Acto knife on it as the fondant starts to stick to it, All right? So you're gonna need an X-Acto knife. I like to use a Dresden tool or some kind of tool that has a point to it and I like that it has a little curve, right? Because if you use something that's just pointy like this, you can poke into the fondant. So something that has like a little curve and a point, I can link Dresden tools below. And yeah, and also, a paintbrush with a little bit of water. Okay. So now to get the elephant, I'm gonna, this is, this is holding its shape pretty well. It's not super stiff, but it's not super soft, right? I'm gonna put this on top. When you do that, make sure that it is all the way on top 
I've done it before where I put it on and it's not covering the fondant and then I start to trace it and then I realize that it's hanging off. So put it down, make sure you can feel fondant the whole way around. And I'm just gonna trace the outline to start. And this has a, a weird little kind of like inside and outside outline. So <laughs> sometimes you just have to look at the picture and just decide what you're gonna do. I'm just gonna trace the blue part, not this black line. So I'm going to push down onto the paper so I can trace the outline onto the fondant underneath. underneath. Now, you need to make sure when you are tracing that you don't press too hard because you're gonna push a hole into the paper and into the fondant. So you want to find your happy medium of pressing too hard versus pressing too lightly. So you want to transfer the line. Before I pull this away, I also just wanna put a little dot here so I know where the eye is gonna go and just like a little teardrop so I have an idea of where I'm gonna put the ear. Hold it down and lift it up, peel it back and make sure you can see the line. If you can't, then you can press it, put it back down and retrace. If you just lift it up and then try to put it down, you're not gonna be able to find the correct spot to trace again. All right, and this looks pretty good. So this is a basic shape. This, this should be pretty easy for beginners to get. Now when I cut, when I cut these out, I make a shallow cut first and then a full cut couple different things. You want to hold your knife straight up and down, okay? If you hold it on an angle, the back of the piece is gonna be thinner than the front and it's just gonna look weird. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold it straight up and down and I'm gonna saw up and down so I can get a shallow cut and then I'll go through and cut the whole thing out because if you put it all the way down to the board and start trying to cut, it's gonna make it so ugly. It's not gonna cut right. So just start, find a spot in here and just I'm sawing about halfway down, making sure I'm holding the knife perfectly straight up and down. As the fondant starts to stick to the knife, wipe it off on the wet paper towel and continue. Now we have the shallow cut. So now I'm just gonna retrace the line, stick this all the way down to the cutting board and now I'm just gonna drag and cut. So you wanna make sure you're holding the knife parallel. And now that you have that shallow cut there as a guide, it's not gonna mess up the fondant like this. So when I get to corners, I like to kind of peel it away a little bit so you can get the knife in there. It's a little tricky. Sometimes you have to go one way and then come back the other way to completely be able to separate the fondant. But the most important part is that you're not doing this on an angle. You're holding it straight up and down. I'm gonna to have to turn this so I can see it a little better and try not to get my head in the way. My head might get in the way. Ah. Again, in this little section, it's gonna be a little difficult. So just put the knife down and cut both sides. All right, and then I'm gonna flip it the other way and cut up to the little the little elephant crotch, if you will. <laughs> I don't know what that is. All right, so now look at this. If I stick the knife all the way down, this part is wider than here and it's gonna cut it wider than it needs to be. So that's where our other little tools come in. So I have a needle tool here. I can link, I'll link everything below. And I'm just gonna stick this down here and I'm just gonna start peeling it away. All right? So that way I'm not gonna mess up this little part in the middle. So you just have to, you have to pay attention to wh when you're cutting, just to make sure that you're not gonna mess up the piece. Like the fondant that you're peeling away, that doesn't matter if it gets messed up. So again, where it meets in a corner, just try to cut to where it meets it and then I'm pushing it away, you see? And then in little curves like this, it can get tricky too. So again, just holding it straight up and down going down to the bottom where it starts to curve and then I'm pulling it away. Like I'm tucking the, the knife away so it can start to pull the fondant away from itself. So just cut all the way down. I hope this is making sense, all right? And I'm sticking the knife down and kind of dragging the fondant away. I'm not gonna cut in because then it's gonna mess this up. After you cut something out of fondant like this, it's not pretty. You gotta work with it a little bit. There's pieces sticking out and everything. So what I like to do, first flip it over, take your finger and run it 
across the edges all on the back and just smooth it out. And now, this is where I love like these Dresden tools or whatever. So you see this piece sticking up here. I just want to press it back onto itself. This, this tool has a really smooth center, so I could just stick it down there. You know, so what I'm doing is uh, like taking the ugly edges and just making it look better. I'm pressing it back down onto itself just to make it look a lot cleaner. And then do the same thing, flip it over, take your fingers, rub, rub them around the edges to smooth it out. And just take a tool and press the fondant back onto itself. Next, we're gonna do the little ear, cheek, and eyeball. Oh man, I forgot to roll out black for the eyeball. I rolled out my little piece of black fondant, just letting it sit so it can stiffen up a little bit. And we're gonna do the ear. So to do that, I wanna use the medium blue. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna place the picture on top and then just trace the ear. and cut it out. Now, since this is thin fondant, you don't have to make a shallow cut. You could just put it all the way down to the cake board. Same thing. Once you cut something out, take your fingers and just smooth the edges. So having my picture here for reference, I'm gonna place this on top. So I made the little indentation of where the ear is gonna go. And I'm just gonna put this on top of that. So get a little water on the back. Now, I wanna make sure I have water all the way to the edges. However, make sure you do not put too much water on here. If there's too much water on here, it's gonna seep out onto this fondant underneath. So just enough to make it sticky. And this is just a design that I put in there myself. You don't have to do this, but I had this really teeny, teeny ball tool um, I don't know where I got these. However, if you don't have a ball tool, you can use the little pointy end of this Dresden tool or something like that. Um, and you don't even have to do this part, but I just put the pattern in here. So you can see I did one here and then two on the outside and then one underneath and then two, you know, I just kind of lined them up. I'm just starting here and pressing down. I'm kind of pressing down and turning it around a little bit just to get that imprint. I need to turn this to the side so I can make sure it's even, but then do one on one side, one on the other, and then I'm going to go another row down and make sure it's directly underneath this one. And then I'm going to do it on the outside of these, right? So just trying to make it look a little even. And then the next row down is going to be underneath this one and this one. Adorable. All right, now I want to give him a little cheek. So I have this little bead container. I got it at an art store, art supply store, and I just keep all of my tips in here. I'm going to use the Atico number 803. I guess it would de depend what size your elephant is as to what size tip you want to use. And I'm just going to take the light blue and just cut a circle out, pop it through. And again, just take my fingers around the edge and smooth it out. Get a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of water on the back. And I'm just gonna put that right here. And then I want to do this little eye. So I'll get that black fondant that I rolled out. So I think I'll do a number eight. And just cut this out. And again, wet the back and where I put that little mark for the eye. Now I know I could just put this right here. Adorable. And look at your, it's a simple little cute little elephant. All right. And now I've started to do this before it dries because it's so much easier to get these in. So I just wet the ends of these six inch bamboo skewers. And what you want to do, this is going to go into the cake and I want it to be able to stand up on its own. So I'm gonna put two skewers in his feet, 
where they're gonna go in on the cake. If I put them too far out, you're gonna be able to see them. So stand it up and you can see where it's gonna to touch the cake. And I wanna put one here and one here. Now, the fondant is still relatively soft. So what you wanna do is take the pointy end and just put it exactly in the middle, not too high and not too low, or else you're gonna be able to see the skewer in here. This is why we rolled the fondant out pretty thick. So I'm, I'm gonna to start to basically screw this into the fondant. So as I'm twisting it, I'm pushing it up. So my, my little motto, my twist and push. So I'm keeping my hand down here to keep it in place and I'm lightly, I'm not even pushing too hard. I wanna do this gradually so it doesn't mess up the elephant. And same thing on this other side. So put it right in the middle. Am I screaming? I'm sorry, whatever. Put it right in the middle and I'm twisting as I push in. Now, when I go up a little bit, I'm gonna flip it over, make sure I can't see it starting to stick out the other side and then twist and push and twist and push. And then flip it over, make sure you can't see it and then twist and push and twist and push. So I can feel it in here as I'm starting to move it, but it's not sticking out either way. All right, so now the skewers are about up to here and that's good. I'm gonna set this aside, um, just leave it out. I'm gonna put it on another, um, on another cutting board and just leave it out at room temperature so air can get to it so it's gonna dry. So today, I'm gonna to leave it out here and then before I go to sleep, I'm, I'm gonna leave it out face up, I'm sorry. And before I go to sleep, I'm gonna flip it over and then leave it like this while I'm sleeping so the back can get exposed to air as well. And tomorrow morning, it's gonna be nice and super hard and I can, I can put it on the cake. So setting this aside and then we will start to do the name and all the other decorations. Now I'm gonna work on this name plaque here. So what I wanna do first is cut out the letters. These letters that I used in this are from this alphabet set. They're a little bit of a pain in the butt. However, they do look good. So um, I can find this and link this below for you, or you can just use other letters that, that you have. I'm doing the letters in the darker blue and the name that I'm doing, I, I, I know I'm probably gonna pronounce it wrong, but it's Mason Amiri. So I wanna make sure that I get all of these letters out of here. I wanna do all capital letters instead of capital and lowercase. So I'm just gonna grab all of these letters. And they are in order, so when you lift them up, you know that that's an M. <laughs> I'm turn it this way. You know the M goes here, A. So when you're done, you can put them back in the right spot and you know um, where they are. And also these letters on here, I don't know if you'd be able to see, but there is a little arrow pointing up. So with a letter like this, like an S, um, sometimes you wouldn't know which way is up. So if you just make sure when you're cutting the arrow is facing up, then you're gonna um, have them all look correct. So this is where it gets to be a little pain in the butt. You need a needle tool or something tiny that you can be able to start to uh, scoop these letters out of here. What I like to do is take a little bit of shortening on a paintbrush, all right? A teeny tiny bit, like you can barely see it on here and just kind of paint the letters, right, before I use them. That way it's gonna release a lot easier. And I'm just gonna put this, the arrow is facing up. I'm gonna push this all the way down. So it's important that this fondant is pretty thin. There we go. So it's rubbing against the, the cutting board. Now, it looks a little messy, so take your finger and just get rid of any extra fondant. All right, so just to show you what's happening now, this is not coming out of here right, okay? So if this happens to you, which it may, we're gonna fix that and add a little more tylos to this and we have to roll it out even thinner than it is right here, okay? So this fondant is actually too soft for me to use these letters. I'm gonna pop this back in the microwave, add a little more tylos and roll it out super, super thin. It's super thin now, like paper thin. 
I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes and then we'll cut the, the letters out. So for now we'll do the squares. All right, so now I want to cut out all the little squares that are going to be the gingham border. As you can see, there's light blue in all three rows, white in two of the rows, and dark blue only in one. So I need the most light blue, and then I need, you know, second most of white, and then the least of the dark blue. I have these square plunger cutters. I can find these and link these below. These are a godsend when you're trying to cut little squares and you can just plunge them and push them out instead of using a square cutter and then trying to push them out. If you use the smallest one, you're going to be in little square hell and you're going to be cutting squares forever. <laughs> so just decide which one that you want to use. I think I'm going to use the medium one. This is going to be wrapped around a five inch tier. So I'm going to start with the white. And I have a cake lid here that I'm just going to put all the squares on here. It's just easier. I, I cut the lids off of cake boxes when I use them and I just save the lids so I can use them for stuff like this. So what I like to do is cut it out. I'm going to put it down and press the plunger down and it's really going to smooth it out. And then when I get it out of here, it's, it's going to look so much cleaner, right? So press it down to cut and then take it and press the plunger all the way down while it's against the, cake, the cutting board and then it's a much cleaner cut that way. And now I have these finished. So I'm just going to set these aside until I'm ready to use them. Just be careful when you're handling this because this is a little flimsy and you don't want to um, drop it or anything. So I'm just gonna put this on the countertop until we are ready to put them on the cake. All right, let's try this again. So this has been sitting out for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. Hopefully it's not too soft. If it is, then we'll try something else. So again, taking a little bit of shortening on the paintbrush and painting the letter. Just a little bit. If you do too much, then it's gonna be a big mess. Making sure the arrow is pointing up and just press it all the way down to the board and then kind of drag it along the cutting board so it starts to cut, all right? Lift up, much better cut than before. So I'm gonna take my finger and just um, smooth it over the letter and that way it'll, it'll get rid of any extra fondant that's sticking out. Okay, now the tricky part. Get your needle tool or you can use your X-Acto knife and lift it up. So you want to make sure that you are not messing up the letter. You have to start to lift it up. So if you push it in from the back, you're not going to be able to see the letter from the back. All right, I need to use an X-Acto knife. So now I'm messing around with it, I wanna put it back into its shape. And you can kind of see down here, the edges are a little dirty. So I wanna take my X-Acto knife and just cut off any pieces that I can see that are sticking out, you know, just making it look a little cleaner. Okay, Jace, now only what, 10 more letters left and then just repeating the process. There's a little accent over this eye. So I guess what I'm gonna do is just cut a little piece. There's this like weird little comma looking thing. It's like a hyphen. And I will just use that. I am shaking so bad. <laughs> okay, oh, so you can see these letters are a pain in the butt, but they do look pretty. So now I wanna put it on a white background and then a gray background. So I'm gonna transfer these letters onto white fondant. And what I'm gonna do first is put the letters down so I can get them in the correct spot before I glue them down with water. I'm gonna use my needle tool and just put these, get these into the correct position. All 
All right, that doesn't look center. I wanna shift everything over to the right a little. So this is why I don't glue them down right away. I like to place the letters where they're gonna go first. Now, before I do that, I have my little cutters here. All right, this one's gonna be cutting it real close. Um, so I think I'm going to do this one and then we'll just cut it a little smaller. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm actually gonna bring these down a little more. All right, that looks good. So now, <laughs> you have a little bit of water in your paintbrush. I'm gonna do one letter at a time, making sure you don't get too much water on the back, like I said before. Because if you get too much water on the back, it's going to seep out and it's going to get on the white fondant. So just getting it wet enough, flip it over and place it back down. And then you can kind of manipulate it into place before you push it down onto the fondant. So there, that looks like it's in a good spot. Now I'm going to press it down. All right, and do the same. So you wanna to try to make sure that you don't move the other letters that aren't glued down yet. All right, now this is it's a little bigger than I want it to be. So I'm gonna center it. This looks good. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just press it down a little bit just to get the impression. So I'm just gonna cut it in a little bit so it, it's just a little smaller than the outline. All right, and again, like I said, whenever you make cuts, just taking your finger and smoothing out the edges. Nice, and now I'm gonna put this on a gray background. Grabbing a piece of the gray fondant that I rolled out, flip it over, get some water on the back and make sure you go all the way to the edges and again, Make sure there's not too much water, just enough to make it sticky so it doesn't seep out underneath. And now same thing, I wanna cut an even border the whole way around. So I'm gonna to have to get close and just make sure that it's even. And same thing, smooth out the edges. So I'm not ready to put this on the cake yet. I have a, I'm putting this on a five inch tier. I have a six inch cake dummy. So I find that if you do a five or a six inch cake dummy, it's fine. I have two little push pins in the bottom to put down here so it doesn't roll. Um, I'm not sure what this stuff is. I think this is just airbrush coloring on here. But anyway, so I put this down and then I'm gonna dry it on here so it dries with the curve to it. If I lay it flat and then try to put it on the cake, oh, you see that right there? It's starting to crack. <laughs> so just, I'll, I'll show you how to fix that too. But um, that was so stupid, I just cracked it. But yeah, so make sure you dry it with a shape to it so it doesn't get cracked worse. And then let's uh, make the polka dots. So I just did the same size polka dots here. Looks like I used this one. So this is an Atiko number 805 tip. And I like to use round tips to cut out circles. All right, so I have my cake. It's iced in buttercream and stacked and it is fresh out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid, right? So I'm not gonna mess it up as I work with it. I have videos on how I ice cakes and buttercream and detail in detail and how I stack in detail. I don't want this video to be 500 hours long. So I will link those below and you can see how to do that in other videos. So now I wanna put the square border on here. You can see it at the bottom, it's medium, uh, it's light blue and white, light blue, white, light blue, white and then it's medium light blue, medium light blue. So we're gonna start with the light blue and white alternating. I have some piping gel here and I'm gonna get some on a paintbrush. And I'm, this is the front of my cake. I marked with a, a, a Sharpie marker and I'm just gonna make a little uh, notch in the back so I know where the back is. And just take some piping gel and just wipe it around the whole cake so the squares can stick. Now I don't want to go up too high because the squares aren't go they're only going three high. So it's going to be about here. Um, it's better to just wipe a little lower than you expect and then go back and put a little more on if you need to. 
All right, good. So starting in the back, I'm going to alternate light blue and white. So you want to make sure that they're pushed all the way down to the bottom. And I have this little palette knife and you want to make sure that they're pressed against each other, right? So there's no gaps. And as you get to the back, if the cake gods are on your side, it's gonna match up. Today, they are not. <laughs> so it looks like there's gonna be, actually, it's the perfect amount of space, but there's gonna be two of the same color next to each other, and that's fine. So the next row is gonna be light blue and dark blue. However, the light blue is on top of the white, the dark blue is on top of the light blue. So to get that gingham look, you have to make sure that you um, stack it the correct way. So making the dark blue on top of the light blue, and then the light blue on top of the white, and then just alternating dark blue and light blue the whole way around. Okay, and then for the final row, just doing the same thing, but this time the white is going on top of the light blue and the light blue is going on top of the dark. So just making sure you continue that, pa that pattern. And if I see that there's like not a lot of piping gel in some areas, so I could just dip my paintbrush back in and just put a little more there. And by the way, if you get to the back and the square is too big, you could just cut, you know, cut it so it can fill in the extra hole in the back, right? And now I just want to take my a little palette knife or something and I'm just going to press down and make sure that these are in a straight line and they're all compacted and pressed into each other. Beautiful. Now I want to get the name tag. And I like to put this on with a little bit of icing rather than piping gel or water. I just feel like it sticks a little better. So just getting some icing in the color that you ice the cake and putting it on the back. And if you want to, just getting the edges a little wet with water or piping gel so the edges will stick down. And finding the center, I have to turn it towards me. Now I can put the polka dots on, so really no rhyme or reason to it. I have all these little polka dots that I cut out. And just getting a little bit of water and a paintbrush on the back. I mean, a little bit of uh, getting a paintbrush and a little water on the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just putting them on here any way that you please. I try not to put two colors next to each other, so I don't want to put a gray down here again because there's already a gray down here, so I'm going to do a light blue. And that's just my preference. Um, I'm a little weird when I try, I just try to make a variation in the colors. And then I'll do gray up top. And blue down here, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it really doesn't matter. Adorable. Now we are ready to put the rosettes on the bottom. So I'm doing three colors. I'm doing white, the light blue, and the darker blue. So since there's three colors, I want to measure how tall my cake is. This is a five inch and a seven inch tier. I made this seven inch tier a little taller than what I normally do. This one is about five inches probably. Yeah, and this is five and a half inches, right? So five and a half inches divided by three. So it's 1.8 inches, so almost two inches each. Should've known that, but all right. I hope this doesn't get confusing, but we wanna make marks in here so we know where, like how high the rosettes have to be. All right, so I have this handy dandy 
ruler here. So I'm going to go just under two inches and then just under four inches, right? So I'm going to go, uh, what is this, uh, an eighth, an eighth of an inch under two, and I'm going to make a little mark. And then two eighths of an inch under four, and I'm going to make a mark. All right. And these are just guidelines to show you how tall your rosette should be. So I'm going to go right under the two and two under the four and just do this the whole way around. You know, so if your cake was six inches tall, you would do one at two and one at four, right? It doesn't have to be exact, just approximate. Okay. Went the whole way around. So now you know how tall your rosettes, about how tall your rosettes have to be. All right, now I wanna color the buttercream. Here I have my American buttercream, still keep in this container. Uh, I can link my recipe for this below. And I'm just gonna take, I don't know, you have to make sure you have enough to go the whole way around. It's better to have too much than not have enough and have to go back and, and re uh, color it. So now I want to make this, we're going to start at the bottom. I want to do the darker blue. I have this cornflower blue and to get it that color, we're going to have to use a pretty good amount of it. So getting some out of here, a big old dollop. Mix it around. Make sure it's dark enough. If it's not dark enough, just add a little more. So now I have these 18 inch plastic icing bags and I a 1M tip. I can link these below. Cut off the tip and make sure you don't cut off too much because if you cut off too much, the tip is just gonna slide out. Fold the top of the bag over and put the tip in all the way to the bottom. Now I have a neutral bullet, so I just like to use this cup to stick the bag in and then fill the bag with the icing. Fold the corners in, fold the top down once and then twice. Okay. Clip the top and now I can squeeze like halfway out of this bag because it'll be a little easier to control this way. Twist it. And now when you make rosettes, you just do little circles. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to start here. I'm going to squeeze and I'm going to turn around to the right and try not to go too far above this line using the line as a guide. Okay. So starting in the very back where the colors um, don't match or they do match and I'm going to squeeze. And then as I'm squeezing, turn it around and make a little rosette and then stop squeezing and lift up. Okay and do the same thing. So squeeze, move over a little bit to the right or to the left, depending on how you're going and just keep going around in circles and lift up. Now the icing does start to get on the tip. So it starts to stick to the tip. I don't like that. So I'm just going to wipe it off. So the tip is clean and you get a better rosette. So you want to make sure that the rosettes are butting up next to each other, right? And there's going to be little spaces at the bottom. We're going to fill that in cleaning the tip and keep going the whole way around using your lines as a guide. Now, as the icing gets low, I'm just going to squeeze a little more down from the top, right? And then twist again. Now, there's a little space here at the back and you can just make a little rosette there. That's why we start at the back because the back isn't always as pretty. Okay. You can see there are little, little spaces in between. So what I want to do is just fill them in with a little star. So I'm just going to push this up against the, the space where I can see why squeeze a little bit and pull away as I'm squeezing. Right? So I just want to fill in these little spaces here. It looks weird at first, but when it's all together, it'll look so much better. So I'm going to use the darker blue to make the lighter blue icing, but I don't think I need all this dark blue because I'm just going to add a little bit of white. Obviously, I didn't use all this icing. So I'm going to squeeze 
the extra into this bowl. Again, it's better to start uh, with less and add more. So this icing, I will just save, you know, for something else. So I have some of the dark blue in here and I'm just gonna take and add a little more white. I can hold it up against this light blue and this looks like it's the right shade. So if I added too much, if I added all the rest of that dark blue and just added a little white, it would have been too dark. Fold the top over, cut off the tip, close to the bottom so the tip won't slide out, and gently put this in. So these have points to it and if the points poke the bag, then the icing is gonna start to seep out of the bag. So just be gentle as you're pushing it down. Good. Put it in some kind of cup and then fill the bag. Fold the corners in. Fold the top down once, twice, and clip. And then just go halfway, squeeze and twist. And now, and we're gonna start in the back again. Now, I don't wanna do it exactly on top. I wanna do it in the, I'm gonna do these circles starting in these lower divots, right? So if I do it just exactly on top, there's gonna to be a big space here. So I'm gonna start where these two meet, start in the middle and do your little circle, right? So you see that this circle fills in this little space here and just do that the whole way around, making sure that it touches the circles to the left and, or the rosettes to the left and the rosettes underneath. And you're using this line as a guide. Okay, now we'll do the white at the top. Now, when I'm doing this one, again, you wanna make sure that you're in between and you wanna come all the way up to the top. Right? And just making sure that it, it hits all of the points that it's supposed to hit. So it's touching the rosette next to it, it's filling in the space underneath and it's coming all the way to the top. And they're so pretty. So now I'm gonna stick this in the refrigerator um, and let it, let the icing solidify and I'm gonna let the topper harden and then I will put that on tomorrow. If you wanna clean this up a little bit, I'm gonna take a, a wet paintbrush and just kind of push down any parts that are sticking out too far, right? Just to make it look a little cleaner. But I kind of like the, the look of it as, as the icing is a little haphazard. It's not all perfect, it's just so pretty. And these pieces down here at the bottom, you can clean that up a little bit as well if there's any icing sticking out. All right, now we're gonna put the topper on. I just got this out of the refrigerator. This was sitting in the fridge overnight. All right, so this has fondant on it. Right now it's about 90 degrees. I have my air on in the house. The house is cool. You know, when you refrigerate cakes, you need to make sure that your house is cool, that you, you don't wanna bring a, a cold cake out into a warm room because it's just gonna mess it up. So I have this here. Totes adorbs. <laughs> I'm bringing back the word totes, okay? What we can do is get a little bit of piping gel on the bottom. So I have some piping gel here, and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the bottom right around where the skewers stick out, and it's gonna help it stick to the cake a little better. Or maybe it doesn't, it just makes me feel better about myself. And I wanna turn this so I can get it centered and then stick it down. If you found that the skewers were too long, you could just get a pair of snips and snip the bottom um, if the sticks were sticking out too long to go down into the cake. All right, and then, remember those cracks that I got in here um, when I was an idiot and I bent it? <laughs> 
So a way that I, I fix this, and it sounds so weird, and it works on any, any color fondant that has hairline cracks in it. You might not be able to see this, but there are tiny, tiny cracks. You can only see if you get really close. Get a little tiny bit of shortening on the end of a paintbrush and just basically spackle those um, little cracks. And for some reason, it freaking works. It just makes it go away. I don't know. So if you ever have imperfections in your fondant like that, little pock marks or something like that, you can use a little tiny bit of shortening to spackle that. And now I just want to, for the finishing touch, I want to put a ribbon around the bottom of the cake board. This cake board is made with four cake circles. I have a video on how I make my cake boards. I can link that. And when I make it with four cake circles, I need to use a five, eight, five eighths inch ribbon. So I'm just going to wrap it around. Let it overlap and then just cut right there. Now I'm going to put glue, not on the polka dot side, on the bottom side. So I have a glue stick here. What I like to do is take the lid, press it against the side of the board just to really flatten out that aluminum foil. And then I'm going to be off camera to do the ribbon, but I'm going to put glue all around the perimeter of the cake board and then on the back of this blue ribbon. And then just starting in the back, I'm going to hold it with my finger and then stretch it around and then put it down, right? And then take my other finger and press it, whoops, <laughs> try not to <laughs> loosen it, press it against the side of the cake again and keep on going around. And then where it overlaps, I'll just put a little more glue right here so it can stick to itself. And then just take your finger one more time for good measure around the whole thing. And there's your adorable little elephant cake. Why did my voice sound like that? <laughs> there's your adorable elephant cake. I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator until I am ready to take the pictures and box it up. So here you go. Here is the adorable little simple elephant birthday slash baby shower slash whatever you want to use it for cake. I'm going to put this down. So I think the biggest pain in the butt in this was to get those stinking letters out of those letter cutters. Now you don't have to use those. There are many other letter cutters, tappets and stuff like that, that you could use that would look really nice too. But yeah, that's basically the biggest pain in the butt about this whole thing. Cause this design is pretty simple with the polka dots, the squares, the elephant just tracing it's a basic elephant and it's so simple but it looks so cute and like i said before this is going back in the refrigerator i refrigerate all my cakes i don't know how people make cakes and not refrigerate them <laughs> i don't know i've been doing it for so long and yes if they're covered in fondant if they're decorated in fondant buttercream whatever i refrigerate all of my cakes it will go back in the refrigerator wrapped up until it's ready to be picked up and like I said, I've said before, I can link my video. You want to, I'm gonna make a video on um, refrigerating fondant decorated cakes. You have to gradually bring it to room temperature. You gotta do that. If you refrigerate your cakes, you can't take it out of the fridge and place it in your hot car and think that there's not gonna be a problem. Okay, there's a whole process, but I will create a video all about that for you guys. Um, and I don't know why I'm rambling about that right now because that doesn't really matter. But everything that I used in this video, I will link below in the description. So I think that's it for now. If you have any other questions or comments about that, about this cake or about anything, about anything. <laughs> hey, if you want to comment about anything, just leave it below. If you want to just say hello, have a nice day, whatever, that's fine. Um, and I will get back to you. I try to check my YouTube comments once a day. And you can follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and I have my website. I am on Twitter and TikTok, but I just don't, like I can't do everything. You know, like I'm trying to figure out TikTok, us old ladies, like I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to use it and I haven't done it yet. But anyway, I am on all those platforms. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these videos next and hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it and got something out of it. It really helps out my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.